In this video I will be showing you guys how to install and set up RetroArch on your PlayStation Classic. So all you need for this video is BleemSync installed and a USB. If you do not have BleemSync installed make sure to check out my last video on this. I'll leave a link to it in the description and um, that is where I show you guys how to install the latest version. Anyway once you've done that and you've got all the BleemSync files on your USB go and get the USB that you had the files on. Go and connect this to your computer and I will show you guys what to do from there. So on your computer there will be a link to the BleemSync web page in the description of this video. Scroll down and you just want to click on where to download. It's going to bring us to this section. What we need to do is actually get two files. We need to get the RetroArch only add-on, so click on this. And we also need to get the RetroArch overlay pack. Now you can get the cheap pack as well, that is entirely up to you. I'm just going to download it, it's a pretty small file to get the cheats. So we've got these three files downloading, we just have to wait for these to download and I will be back once it's done. So once all the downloads are done, all you have to do is go to our downloads folder and simply find them in there. So as you can see, I've got everything right here. If you double click on the zip files, you can actually see what's inside. The easiest thing to do is select all of them, right click and just select extract here. So this could take a few minutes to complete extracting, just wait for it and um, yeah, once it's done, we will be able to copy it across. Okay, so once it's done, they are all going to be in this BleemSync file. Now, it's very simple. Make sure your Sony USB is plugged in. We're going to get the BleemSync file folder. Drag and just drop it across on the root of your USB. It's as easy as that, and it's now going to copy all of the RetroArch files and folders across. So that is it for your computer. We now have to wait. This can take quite a long time because there's a lot of small file folders. As you can see, it's coming up with 28 minutes. That's a long time. So I'm going to wait for this to copy across. No, you could get this like notification come up. Just click replace the files in the destination and that would be fine. So the last thing to do is copy across our ROMs. I've got three different types of ROMs here. I've got an SNES ROM, a Nintendo 64 ROM and a Game Boy Advance ROM. So what I have to do for each of these ROMs is right click, new folder and we just have to create a folder for each one. So for SNES I'm literally just going to call it that. For N64 I'm going to right click, new folder and just call it N64 and then we do exactly the same for Game Boy Advance. Just call it GBA or something like that. Obviously you can call it whatever you want but this is just the easiest. Now we just drag our ROMs into each folder so we've got Game Boy Advance, we've got Nintendo 64, and we've got this SNES ROM. Now it's entirely up to you where you decide to get your ROMs from, but once you've got them, you want to right click again, new folder, and just call it ROMs, all in capitals, press enter. And now we can select each of these folders holding control and just drag them into the ROMs folder. And that's literally it. We've now got all our ROMs in. Now we can actually get the whole ROMs folder and just put this on the root of our USB. And then there you go. That is it for our computer. We've now got the emulator copied across and we've got all our ROMs copied across as well. Now we can go back onto our PS one classic let's set up retroarch and let's get some classic games working so once we are back on our PlayStation Classic, make sure it is powered off off the wall. Um, you can always disconnect your power cable if it's turned on. But anyway, I'm just going to get my USB and I'm just going to go and plug it in. Now I can just go and power it on. We are just going to wait for the orange light to come on and now we can just click the power button. So here we are, we should now have RetroArch working. What we can actually do is just select RetroArch and just press X to boot into it. And there you go guys, we're now on the main menu of RetroArch. If you wish to change the theme, scroll down to the settings, go into drivers and press X, scroll all the way down and we're looking for the theme here. Now you can change it to whatever you want. I prefer X and B, so we can actually just press circle to go back. Now if we go up to the main menu, what we can do is go to the configuration file, do um, save current configuration, so press X on this one. And now what we, what we can actually do is just restart RetroArch. So if you just go to the main menu, you can just go down to quit. And then we can actually restart it, and it will actually have the theme that we selected. There are multiple different themes, so it's entirely up to you which theme you choose. X and B, this one here, this is my favorite one. As you can see, it's got a really cool PlayStation Classic X and B theme on here. So what we can actually do is now we can play our games. You guys might know how to use RetroArch already. It looks very similar to the PSP and PlayStation 3 theme. Um, if you go over um, all the way to the right, you can actually find all your PlayStation games. You can scroll down, and you can just you know play these and boot them up. So if you want to load your retro ROMs, scroll down and go on to load content and press X. Scroll down to where it says standard directory and press X. Press X on this one and now we're just looking for the media folder. So scroll all the way down and find media, press X on this one and here you go. We've now got our ROMs folder right here. So as you can see we've got Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 64, SNES. 
So let's try my SNES game. Let's just do Castlevania. Now we can choose an SNES emulator. And there you go, it will actually load up. So we can play Nintendo 64 as well. Maybe I will try that in a second after this. But the sound works fine, the gameplay is fine, everything like that. Of course this is RetroArch, so you can configure this as much as you want and, you know, customize it. Um, it's entirely up to you what you decide to do. There's plenty of RetroArch tutorials on YouTube, so if you're find, trying to find something um, specific, you could probably find it quite easily. And yeah, here you go, playing the SNES version. This seems to be a bit slow for me, I'm not quite sure why. Um, you can pause it by pressing Start. You can also exit by pressing um, Start and select at the same time and you can actually just go down to close content once you're done let's try that Nintendo 64 game as well so if I go into load content this one media we can find it um, ROMs Nintendo 64 there you go let's try this <clears throat> with the Nintendo 64 emulator as well so there you go you can play Nintendo 64 games as well so there you go, that is pretty much it for this video. Obviously you can press start and select and there's so much like options you can change on this game. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.